Hello everyone. In the previous video lecture, we saw the doshas mentioned by Bharata. In this lecture, we are going to see the doshas listed by Bhamaha. In Kavya Langara, Bhamaha mentions 15 Kavya doshas. These Kavya doshas mentioned by Bhamaha include Apartha, Vyartha, Ekartha, Sasamshaya, Apakrama, Shabdahina, Yadiprashta, Pinnavrta, Visanthika, Desha Virotha, Kala Virotha, Kala Virotha, Loka Virotha, Nyaya Virotha, and Agama Virotha. Let's take a look at all these doshas in detail. At this juncture, I would also like to point out that when we cover all these 15 doshas mentioned by Bhamaha, we will be finishing the fourth chapter of Kavya Lankara as well. Now, let's see the first dosha mentioned by Bhamaha, which is Apartha. According to Bhamaha, Apartha is the absence of meaning due to the lack of connection between sentences. Here, Bhamaha says that mere grammatical perfection is not enough to generate meaning in a sentence. For example, Bhamaha says sentences like 10 pomegranates and 6 pancakes etc. do not make any sense. We have seen this example previously in connection with Vamana's idea of guna where Vamana said that Mere adherence to grammatical perfection is not enough to generate sense in a sentence. Here, Bhamaha is presenting it as a dosha. Noam Chomsky has given a similar example to denote a sentence that is grammatically well formed but semantically nonsensical. The example given by Chomsky is colorless green ideas sleep furiously. This sentence is uh, grammatically perfect, but it does not make any sense in reality. The second dosha mentioned by Bhamaha is Vyartha. Vyartha is the presence of conflicting meanings. Bhamaha says, the dosha called Vyartha arises when the first meaning is opposed to the second one, thereby producing a contradictory effect. The following is an example of Vyartha given by Bhamaha. O oh my friend, do not exhibit anger towards your lover. Do not become soft to him. Women who follow the wishes of their husbands do not forfeit their love. In this example, the speaker says that the lady love should show her anger towards her lover. Then later, the speaker advises her that a woman who follows the wishes of her lover never loses her love. In the first line, the speaker asks the lady love to show her anger towards the lover. And then in the second line, he asks her just to follow the words and wishes of her lover and remain calm in his presence. The third dosha mentioned by Bhamaha is Ekartha. This is a dosha that we have already seen in Bharata. Ekartha is tautology or Punerukti. Bhamaha defines Ekartha in the following words. Where two statements convey the same meaning, it is a case of Ekartha. He is of the view that no purpose is being served through the repetition of the same idea. It is also creating boredom in the readers. Thamaha says that if the meaning is very clear in the very first utterance, then why does one need to repeat it? But at this point, Thamaha reminds us that Ekartha cannot be considered a Nitya Dosha or an eternal fault. As far as Thamaha is concerned, the Dosha Ekartha can become acceptable in the expression of emotions like fear, sorrow, 
jealousy, etc. The next dosha is sasamshaya or doubt. According to Bhamaha, that state of mind is called doubt, in which after hearing certain common attributes of two objects without presenting any differentiating qualities, the mind feels unable to fix itself on any one of the two as the object that is meant. In other words, when properties common to two things are heard, but their peculiarities are not mentioned, there arises a doubt as to whether the description applies to the one or to the other. Actually, we are not sure what is the ill of this dosha. The same is the case with the example given. The next dosha we are going to see is apakrama. Apakrama is the absence of order. Pamaha says, krama is that where the things attributed follow the order of the first statement. A statement which does not follow the order said by the first statement is said to have the dosha apakrama. The following is an example of apakrama that Pamaha gives. May Shiva and Vishnu protect you, they who wear respectively a crown and the moon, who are of the color of the dark cloud and snow, and who carry the disc and the trident. In this example, the order is set in the very first sentence. The first person mentioned in the first sentence is Shiva and the second one is Vishnu. But this order is completely messed up in the second statement. We know that Shiva wears the moon and Vishnu the crowd. Ideally, to conform to the order set by the first statement, in the second statement, the moon should have been mentioned first and then the crown, the second. The same is the case with the color of the god. Shiva has the complexion of the snow and Vishnu's complexion is dark like the cloud. Here also, to follow the krama set by the first statement, the white complexion of Shiva should have been mentioned first and then that of Vishnu. Finally, the order in which weapons of the two gods are mentioned is also faulty. First, the poet should have mentioned trident and then the disc, but they are mentioned the other way around. Now, the next dosha is Shabdahina. What is Shabdahina? Shabdahina is the ungrammatical use. Pamaha defines Shabdahina in the following words. That dosha is called Shabdahina in which words are used against the injunction of the Sutrakara and Padakara. Uh, this is so because such use is not found amongst the disciples of eminent teachers. Here, the word Sutrakara refers to Panini and Padakara refers to the author of Padapatha. Now, let us take a look at the next dosha mentioned by Pamaha. The next dosha that Pamaha mentions is Yadi Prashta. Yadi Prashta is the fault of deviation from the rules of metrical pose. The next dosha is Pinnavrta. According to Pamaha, the fault called Pinnavrta occurs when the rules of metrical sejura have been ignored. Pamaha observes that the defect wrong meter or Pinnavrta consists in either the distribution in improper places of long and short letters or of their absence or their abundance. In other words, Pamaha is of the view that there are three situations that can possibly lead to Pinnavrta. First of all, the distribution of long and short letters in improper places. Secondly, the absence of Sejura and finally, the abundance of Sejura. The next dosha is called Visandhika. Visandhika is the absence of conjunctions or the necessary euphonic combination. After Visandhika, Pamaha mentions the dosha called Desha Virotha. Desha Virotha 
is the statements uh, that are against the non facts about places. The following is an example of those Desha Virotha that Thamaha mentions. By the side of the caves in the Malaya mountains, the agaru tree grows, the deodors bend under a lot of their fragrant blossoms. Here, the Malaya mountains are in the south of the tropics. Both agaru and deodor are found in the Himalayas. But as opposed to this general knowledge about the places, the poet says that the deodor and agaru trees are found in the Malaya mountains. This is an example of the dosha called Desha Virotha. Now, let us take a look at the next dosha called Kala Virotha. Kala Virotha is the inappropriateness of time. According to Pamaha, time is divided into six divisions by the six seasons. Kala Virotha is the transposition of the peculiarities of one season as occurring in another. The following is an example of Kala Virotha. The mango trees being in full blossom brighten the forest and render fragrant the winter winds which carry cold spray. It is an example of Kala Virotha because the mango trees do not bloom in the winter season. But here in this example, the mango trees are said to have bloomed in the winter. The next dosha that Pamaha deals with is Kala Virotha or the poetic fault arising out of the lack of technical knowledge about arts. Pamaha defines Kala Virotha as follows. The word Kala includes both technical knowledge and technical skill in arts. The next dosha that Pamaha mentions is Loka Virotha or the statements that go against the common knowledge about the ways of the world. According to Pamaha, the world is divided into the immovable and the movables. The term world here stands for the experience of the working of these two worlds. Whatever is con contrary to the experience of these two is called Loka Virotha. The following is an example of Loka Virotha. Out of the ichor flowing from the cheeks of those elephants, there arose a frightful river whose torrent carried away the elephants, horses and chariots. I am not sure why Pamaha says that this statement is an example of a defect or dosha called Loka Virotha. It is actually an example of hyperbole or Atishayokti. It is true that in reality, it is not possible to have a frightful river out of the ichor of elephants. The same is the case with the next example that Pamaha gives in this respect. The froth issuing from the mouths of the galloping charges made the pathways in all directions knee deep with water. The situation also does not arise in real life. That is to say, it is not possible for the froth arising out of the mouths of the galloping horses to flood the field. Though it is technically an example of Loka Virotha, this can also be considered an example of hyperbole which Pamaha holds in high esteem. The penultimate dosha or defect uh, that Pamaha mentions is Nyaya Virotha or the poetic blemish that arises out of these statements contradicting the observations in Shastras. Pamaha says, Nyaya refers to the treatises that deal with three goals of life, namely Dharma, Artha and Kama. Here, the fourth goal that is Moksha is completely omitted. The following is an example of Nyaya Virotha that Pamaha mentions. Having described King Vatsa as desirous of conquest and as long sighted as the aged, to describe such a wise one as being devoid of spice is an example of this defect. I will explain this story in a nutshell to understand this passage properly. 
here i will be reproducing the summary of the story given in naganatha shastri's translation of kavya lankara the story goes like this the king of ujjain had a daughter the king thought that no bridegroom would suit her except the king vatsa but vatsa was his mortal enemy and could not be approached so he set out to find out a way of getting vatsa into his power vatsa was very fond of hunting one peculiar form of hunting in which he was specifically delighted or interested was entrapping elephants by playing a melody on a magical lute given to him by vasuki the snake king knowing this the king of ujjain prepared a dummy elephant and concealed a number of warriors in it the mahot of this dummy elephant was the general of the army salangayana by this device he decoyed vatsa and captured him thamaha further observes this king vatsa did not realize the true nature of the false elephant which contained within itself a number of warriors and which had as its mahot salangayana the general of the enemy camp here thamaha says that it is surprising to note that the king who is wise and intelligent and good at the strategies of war did not have any spies to inform him of the impending danger in the form of the elephant also the king could not understand the general of the enemy camp who appeared as the mahot in addition to all this phama observes even a child is able to distinguish between an actual elephant and a stuffed one is it difficult how then does it happen phama notes that this description of the king in this way is highly inappropriate and agnes the nyaya dictums the last dosha that we are going to see is agama virodha agama is constituted by dharma shastra and the imitation or the contact prescribed therein agama virodha is an action that's against the dictum mentioned in shastra vamana will later define this dosha in detail since we have uh, covered all the doshas now it is time to wrap up the class before we call it a day let's see all the doshas in a nutshell the first dosha mentioned by bhama was apartha apartha is a dosha that arises out of the absence of collective meaning the dosha called vyartha comes into being when contradictory meanings are put together ekartha is a tautology sasamshya is the generation of doubt the dosha apakrama is the absence of order shabda hina is the ungrammatical use yadi prashta is the fault of deviation from the rules of metrical pose according to bhamaha the fault called bhinna vritta occurs when the rules of metrical sejura have been ignored visandhika is the absence of conjunctions or the necessary euphonic combination desha virodha is inappropriateness of place kala virodha is the transposition of the peculiarities of one season as occurring in another kala virodha is the poetic fault arising out of the lack of technical knowledge about arts loka virodha is the statements that go against the knowledge arising out of one's experience about the world nyaya virodha or the poetic blemish that arises out of the statements contradicting the observations in shastras related to dharma artha and kama agama virodha is an action that is against the dictum mentioned in shastra i hope you have understood all the major doshas that bhamaha lists thank you